Good morning. I'm Ezra Raya reporting on the hottest issues and the biggest stories. This is the Manila Times. An expert from the Department of Science and Technology, or DOST, is recommending the reduction of a kilometer radius of the fishing ban currently in Oriental Mindoro. The fishing ban was put in place after a tanker capsized off the coast of Oriental Mindoro, spilling thousands of liters of industrial oil. Last week, the Philippine Coast Guard has confirmed that the oil spill recovery efforts of the sunken tanker Antique Princess Empress have been completed. Despite this, the Coast Guard said that the oil spill containment is not yet done. Okay, let's hear more from the expert himself. Joining us is MSUIIT professor and DOSD Balik scientist and lead expert on oil spill. Dr. Hernando Bacoza, welcome back to the Manila Times. Well, thank you so much, and I'm glad to be back. Doc, you recommended that instead of completely lifting the fishing ban in Oriental Mindoro, you suggested to reduce it from 15 from the 15 kilometer radius to only five kilometer radius. So, how did you arrive with this conclusion? And uh, is it really safe to consume fish from the area? Yeah, I think um, going back to my statement in uh, sometime in April that uh, the fish has a natural capacity uh, to get rid of oil residues, especially the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons or PEH, which is the basis, you know, for uh, um, banning, you know, the consumption of fish. And in the previous analysis of uh, the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources, I think in March and in April, no single um, fish sample exceeded the threshold value for the PEH. And that's why sometime in April, I recommended the lifting of a fishing ban in many areas in Mindanao. And that was also in coordination with uh, NOAA, the NOAA expert in the United States. So this time, uh, on June 16, that was last week, um, that was the last day of the oil removal operation uh, from the tankers of the sunken ship, you know, the empty Princess Empress. Uh, we were there. I was part of the multi-agency um, uh, team uh, who was given the chance to uh, witness you know, what's happening offshore. So we were shown that the tanks uh, were open, you know, the eight tanks in the in the ship uh, open and uh, with uh, almost no uh, oil coming out from those opening. And uh, except, except for, you know, like uh, very few oil uh, grips on the opening and on the pipes. So we, um, uh, what do you call this yes. one? The Malayan, the, the company responsible for the operation, um, assumed that the tanks are empty. But uh, for me, I think uh, because the oil is um, it's a bunker oil. It's very sticky and highly viscous. So it could adhere to the walls of, uh, the, of the containers and it could be captured within the corners of the tanks. And um, it's not really, uh, I'm not really confident that um, uh, the, the tanks are completely, so there is still oil residues in there. And then those residues can still come out, you know, like anytime, little by little, not in mass. So that's why um, uh, with the minimal presence of oil, I think uh, it's, it's safe, you know, to, um, I mean, to reduce you know, the fishing ban within the five kilometer radius from uh, from the spill side this time. So to be clear, you were there when they declared that the oil spill recovery efforts were completed. So those tankers that sunk at the bottom of or off the coast of Oriental Mindoro were taken out. So na ilabas na po yung mga tanki na yun? No, the tanks were the the tanks were there. Binuksan lang kasi may mga opening yan. We call it hatches. So binuksan yung mga opening ng tanks. Siyempre, pagbukas mo, dapat lulutan ng oil. So lumutan na ang oil, they were able to recover. They were, they were able to recover, I think, 84,000 liters. 84,000? Uh, 
uh, oily residue, yes, from the remaining oil. So, uh, uh, you know, the DSB, Fire Opal, uh, the, and the, with the help of the ROV, the remotely operated vehicle, uh, uh, was able to recover almost 84,000 liters of oil uh, from those eight tanks, you know, Yuma oil tanks. And after we know oil was uh, being released from uh, uh, from those tanks, uh, that was the time that uh, they decided that they cannot recover more oil anymore. That's why on June 16th, they decided to terminate the operation. And it was witnessed by different agencies of the government. So from June 11 po to June 15, doon ata talaga yung ano, yung removal ng oil. Kaya ang they were able to remove yung 84,000. Then pagka June, pagka June 15, that time wala nang lumalabas ng oil. That's why on June 16, uh, the operation was terminated. Uh, actually, the, the responder, um, what did the, the private company, you know, the Malayan uh, Towing and Salvage uh, Corporation admitted that um, the oil, you know, could uh, there are remaining oil adhered in the walls, in the internal walls of the tank. And uh, with the current, and there's no way to recover them. And the current technology will not allow us to, to really take the those uh, containers uh, from the bottom. And the only way uh, is to uh, rely on the natural, on, on nature to uh, remove those oil residues. So that could be uh, bioremediation by bacteria. We have bacteria in the bottom of the ocean that could degrade the oil. And then you have the solution. There is action of uh, marine organism that uh, due to the swimming organism, they could disturb the oil and then the oil could float. And um, yeah, later on evaporation. And uh, there's no way that uh, we can recover <laughs> the entire tank from the from the bottom of the sea. That's 400 meter deep. Yes, sir. Coming back, you said when you tested the fishes that were caught off the coast of Oriental Mindoro, they were clear of any traces from the oil spill. So do you think, it is, is it too soon to lift the fishing ban after only four months from the oil spill incidents? Actually, the um, there was an, a fishing ban in the entire coast of Oriental Mindoro from Puerto Galera to... Um, uh, to Bulalacao. And then I think a month ago, uh, triggered also by the statement of yours truly, <laughs> based on our experience in the US, the deep water horizon oil spill. So fishing ban was lifted in most municipalities. Um, and now uh, the fishing ban that's remaining is um, only in uh, the municipalities of Nauhan. Pola and Pinamalayan. So uh, that statement what was also uh, concurred by the data from before the time that there was no samples that exceeded, you know, the threshold level for the PEA chemical that they test for um, uh, safety of, uh, of the fish samples. And uh, also based on the, the, the fish, and then we have the this uh, lobster, crabs, and shrimp, and we have the shellfish, the mollusks, and the bivalves. So the fish has the fastest ability to get rid of oil residues of their body. And then they can swim. Yeah, they can swim out of the oiled areas. And then next, we have the, the mollusk, you know, the, the lobster, the shrimp, and the crabs. They have the moderate ability to remove oil residues from their body. And then third, we have the shellfish. You know, they are usually stationary and they have the slowest ability to get rid of the oil. So now we are not talking about shellfish. We are not talking about lobster. It's just the fish because the fish has um, this uh, certain, you know, like uh, fastest ability to get rid of uh, BEH and oil residues. And they aim out you know, away from the spilled site. Only the fish has the ability yeah. to get rid of oil residue fastest from their body. So when mm -hmm. we're talking about shellfish like tahong, clams, mussels, and octopus, 
they do not have the same ability as the fish yes. to oil from their body. So yeah. did you also recommend um limiting the fishing in the area from uh, to just fish and uh, to ban all the other shellfish and mollusks fishing? Yeah, uh, the, the initial discussion is only fish because uh, we need also the data. Of course, uh, provided that uh, it should be supported by the data on the ground. You, I'm talking based on my experience in, <laughs> in the biggest oil spill in the world. That's the Deepwater Horizon oil spill in 2000 in Texas. But again, uh, this hypothesis should be supported by data uh, collected by BIFAR. BIFAR is the agency responsible for analyzing fish samples of um, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, or PEA. So if BIFAR recommends, then yeah, that's uh, a good confirmation. And I think before uh, the LTU, the provincial government uh, make a decision because the decision lies in the local government, especially the governor. And the agencies like BIFAR and DNR, they are just recommend recommendatory. They recommend and then it's up for LGU to consider. So my statement, I think, um, yeah, needs to be validated by the data on the ground, especially a data from Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources um, showing that um, PH is really below the uh, critical level or the threshold level. So what are the red flags we need to watch out for when eating seafood you know, from an area with recent oil spills? So for example, namimili ako, how can I assure that the fish or the shellfish that I, bu that I buy is not affected by the oil spill? As there, are there any physical... <laughs> uh, we have sensory smell. If you can smell the oily smell, if you can see an oil on the surface or on the skin of, shall we say, fish, that definitely is contaminated. Mm. But other than that, you know, uh, the chemical way is like to really analyze the flesh. But of course, as a consumer, ako kasi when I buy fish, I smell. I'm from Palawan, so whenever I, <laughs> even if uh, there's, uh, if the, even if with oil or no oil spill, I always smell the fish, and I know like the level of freshness of fish. If you are a Palawanyo. So uh, uh, sensory, we call it sensory, your sense. Your smell, you see your nose, and your sense of sight that you have to inspect that there are no oil. But uh, so far in the analysis of uh, BIFAR, I think in March and April, um, uh, there's no uh, um, oil that's really, uh, there's no uh, fish that's positive for um uh, oil using you know the sensory test. So you recommend uh the five kilometer radius reduction of the fishing ban radius for Oriental Mindoro, sir. Yeah, yes, provided that you know the data from BIFAR will uh support that. And I think uh the LGU is also waiting the data from BIFAR. Thank you so much for that. Mindanao State University Illegal Institute of Technology professor and DOST scientist lead expert on oil spill, Dr. Hernando Bacosa. Maraming salamat po, sir.